CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez launched his 2024 presidential campaign at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in California. He laid out his vision for America and wasted no time going after President Joe Biden. CBS News Miami's Jacqueline Quinn is in Miami with more on this announcement. We are still waiting for Miami Mayor Francis Suarez to come back to Miami after making his big announcement out there in California. But we did talk with his father, who was a former mayor of Miami, about what it was like to sit in the audience as he watched his son throw his name in the hat to run for president. And like Ronald Reagan, it's time for a leader who believes in America's greatest power, Americans. It's surreal. It's, a, it's an out-of-body experience. Former Miami Mayor Xavier Suarez watched with pride as his son, current Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, announced his run for the Oval Office Thursday night at the Ronald Reagan Library in Southern California. We talked with him upon his return at Miami International Airport. And seeing him there as part of what could be a, a, a new chapter in American history where someone is almost as charismatic as, as Reagan, um, and, and just, he loves people. That's where Xavier Suarez says his son has a stronghold. It's time for a leader who can connect with segments of our country that Republicans have historically lost, like young voters and urban voters, and segments we can make gains with, like Hispanics. But just as he's launching his campaign, Mayor Francis Suarez is running in the middle of an ethics investigation, alleging that he took money from developers to build condos. He has outside income, you know, as mayor of Miami, the, the, the pay is not all that great. So he has declared everything that needs to be declared under the law. Um, I've been through the Commission on Ethics twice, both cases times it was dismissed. The mayor is now also joining a crowded field with 10 other candidates, including front runners Donald Trump and the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, both from the state. I wouldn't compare Francis to either of those two. They're in the same party. Instead, his father stressed Mayor Suarez's background in litigation, particularly in the areas of real estate and now tech, as well as helping the homeless. You know, he slowly worked his way up. Uh, the uh, councilman, commissioner, uh, mayor, and then all of a sudden, like in the last uh, couple of years, he's just taken off, and he's a national figure, you know. And in that speech we heard Thursday night, we heard the mayor referencing his father several times as a source of inspiration. In Miami, I'm Jacqueline Quinn, CBS News, Miami. Thank you, Jackie. A bill is now on the desk of Governor Ron DeSantis. It would override local regulations involving landlords and tenants. Miami-Dade and Broward County have the Tenant Bill of Rights. It goes beyond state law. If signed by the governor, the new law would change a couple of things. It would take away the county's extended notice period for rent increases and make it harder for tenants to pay for needed repairs and deduct those costs from future rent. We're starting to see more evictions. We're starting to see more foreclosures. So in terms of the timing, it's bad timing for Miami-Dade County. We do need flexibility and we need our state leaders to understand that. Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Cava sent us a statement. It says, quote, my administration remains committed to protecting tenant rights within the confines of the law, and we will keep working with community groups, landlords, and residents to ensure families have access to safe, quality housing. We have contacted the governor's office to see whether he will sign or veto this and are waiting to hear back. The College Board and the state of Florida are at odds again. This time it's over content in another AP high school course, but this controversy is over the subject of psychology. Florida asked the College Board to modify its AP psychology course. It's to comply with the state's new rules, banning discussion about gender identity or sexual orientation in public schools. College Board is refusing. It argues that omitting the content would leave students ill-prepared for success in the field. 
Right now, residents across the South Central U.S. are surveying the damage following severe storms. Emergency officials say at least three people were killed. 50 more were hurt. Two people are still missing. More than 10 tornadoes were reported across the South. This is all part of a dangerous system that brought record rainfall, lightning and powerful wind. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look at downtown Miami, where we see some clouds. The big story here, heat, humidity, and we all want to know what's in store for the big Dad's Day weekend, Cindy. Yeah, unfortunately, we've got rain coming back in. Yes, we've had a couple of dry days, but that allowed the heat to really soar. So right now it is 93 degrees in Miami, but the temperatures already made it up to 94. That ties the record high for this date set back in 2011. We'll see if it goes uh, one degree higher than that when the summary comes in from the National Weather Service. Service, but it feels like it's in the triple digits. A little bit of drier air got in here this afternoon, so that's why the heat index is not quite so high. So at this point, we just have mostly cloudy to partly sunny skies across the area. Now, I don't think we're going to see much in the form of rain, though. Our models want to paint on a few small showers yet this afternoon, but because of we got that south southwesterly flow, it should push them off the coast very quickly if we get anything at all. And then tomorrow we're going to start this process, and this is going to bring in a lot of moisture. There will be scattered showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Some of these could put down very heavy rain. Localized flooding is going to be a threat by six o'clock. Look at all the rain still out there winding down by eight o'clock Saturday evening, dry overnight. And then again on Sunday, still a high risk that we're going to see uh, a flooding threat here by one o'clock in the afternoon. Some coastal storms in the afternoon at three and that flow just continues to follow out of the south southwest. So there's your moisture in place. So we are not going to see that dry air anymore. Not for quite a while. Plus, we have a, a marginal risk for severe storms just to the north. That goes up to a slight risk north of Fort Lauderdale. So this is going to pack a punch this weekend. So the best or the highest risk to see would be rainfall, heavy rainfall with the risk of flooding. But we're also going to watch for wind, gusty winds, 40, maybe 50 mile per hour winds. Could see some small hail. Tornado threat looks like it's going to be quite low heading into the weekend. So how much rain could we see? Again, coastal areas because of this flow coming out of the west southwest and uh, maybe three four five inches of rain could fall in some spots there so watch for it those low areas that always seem to flood those are the ones we're going to have to keep an eye on showers and storms tomorrow same thing again on sunday there will be some dry time too so father's day not a total washout and we're going to continue that rain all the way into the weekend look at this with a 60 percent chance heading into next week now we'll turn to the tropics here is some in, in updated information the Hurricane Center has now increased the risk that we could see a named tropical system next week in the Atlantic. It is a strong signature coming off of Africa. And over the past three years, June storms, well, we've had a few out there, but the difference is they've formed not off the coast of Africa like this one looks like it's going to. They've all been closer to the United States. So this one could be quite rare. If it gets a name, its name will be Brett. We'll keep an eye on it for you. We'll make sure you've got the latest information on that. In the meantime, rain and hot temperatures. All right, thank you, Cindy. When we come back, the latest details on the sexual assault allegations surrounding one of sports' biggest names, what the UFC and Miami Heat are saying next. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's Quick Cast. Miami police confirmed there is an investigation into UFC star Conor McGregor. TMZ reports McGregor is accused of sexually assaulting a woman during the NBA finals at the Kaseya Center. According to the outlet, it reportedly happened during game four. McGregor's attorney said his client denies the accusation. At the game, the UFC star played a part in a halftime skit. His playful punches of the team mascot sent the mascot to the hospital. The Miami Heat issued this statement saying, quote, we are aware of the allegations and are conducting a full investigation. Pending the outcome, we will withhold further comment. UFC also released a statement saying, quote, the organization is aware of the recent allegations regarding Conor McGregor and will continue to gather additional details regarding the incident. UFC will allow the legal process to play out before making any additional statements. Federal investigators say the swimming pool deck of the collapsed Surfside condo was out of compliance with original building codes. 
as you might recall, 98 people died two years ago when part of the towers fell in the middle of the night. Investigators with the National Institute of Standards also found signs of corrosion and misplaced reinforcement. Investigators expect to be done with their technical work by next spring. They will release their findings and recommendations by 2025. In Broward County, after a months long search, Broward County Schools has a new leader. CBS News Miami's Nicole Lauren has more on his plans for the district. Well, the new superintendent is Peter Lacana. He's coming from Palm Beach County and he tells us he is ready to get to work. We are going to make sure that when you come to a Broward County School Board meeting, you're seeing the best in action. As we know about him, he was born and raised right here in South Florida. Growing up in Pompano Beach, he studied political science at the University of Miami, got his master's at Barry, and his PhD at Lynn University. Now, in 2009, he moved away from teaching to become the director of secondary curriculum in Palm Beach, and he's been the regional superintendent in Palm Beach County up until now. So, Lakata sailed through two days of some pretty intense questioning, and it seems like he is ready to come in to make some changes for the better. We're going to start differently. We're going to make sure we're communicating as much as possible openly, uh, truthfully, expediently, and we'll have a solution if it's a problem at the end of it. So some of his immediate goals include eliminating all F schools in the Broward County School District. On top of that, he wants to take the district from a B rating to an A rating. The next step here is contract negotiations, which will likely begin pretty soon. In Fort Lauderdale, Nicole Lauren, CBS News, Miami. This Sunday is Father's Day. A National Retail Federation survey shows that Americans plan to spend a record high $22 billion to celebrate dad. The top gifts for dad are special outings, followed by clothing and gift cards. Happy Father's Day to all of you wonderful dads out there making a difference. We love you. Well, that is your quick cast. I'm Naja Sherman. Happy Friday, by the way. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami.